it's very cozy. Are we comfortable this way? Yeah, that's great. It's a very nice setting <laughs> for, <laughs> for an actual conversation. So um, the panel um, is about to explore the scale from activism to climate action in museums. And um, I would like to divide the session into two parts. So in the first part, we will have a conversation. And then in the second part, we will have a conversation. So I hope that you're all um, with us to um, actively engage in, in this conversation. Um, so I have three guests here. Next to me sits Vera from the Netherlands Museum Association. We have Rebecca, a representative of Extinction Rebellion Belgium. And we have Emek from Museums of Future, the Turkish chapter, so Museums of Future Turkey. And I think this is a <laughs> really unique setting that with outside the Nemo context would not happen. So it's really a unique uh, opportunity to sit with, uh, with you three here on the table. And we ask the three of you to individually prepare a statement or just to get our conversation start, uh, started on the question, what does climate action mean to you personally as a uh, as a private person, and how is it reflected in the organization uh, or the movement that you represent here today? So, your personal and your professional take on it. So, who would like to start? Emma? Me? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, climate action to me was something like I used to deal with personally, individually, and it, I recognize the urgency of the matter, so I try to raise awareness among uh, my environment, and so raising awareness and taking action, uh, acting in accordance with uh, what science recommends us to mitigate the, um, the impact of uh, climate change, and, but with the uh, the movement I joined later, I realized I wasn't alone, first of all, and I felt more empowered because uh, there wasn't only me, there were more other people and there was this inspiration coming from all this uh, <coughs> unity we uh, established together. And then uh, there is creativity, we join to protests, we take more action, we are more visible, and we actually, when we come together, we are voices stronger and we are heard. And I can also see this from a uh, Turkish chapter that uh, it started small but then got bigger like immediately because there, there was a need for this uh, <coughs> urgent matter. We were all committed and we recognized we have the power uh, that we can change something. And we took that little step and to make that change, and we joined protest, we were present, and uh, we communicated with other organizations like us, and uh, we, our, voice, our voice was so strong that we also reached out to policymakers and decision makers to actually demand a change. So this is what we've become. <laughs> Thank you. Rebecca. Yes, um, I would like to start with an apology. Um, and I'm not apologizing, or I do, uh, I do support the actions that have been taken in museums, and I will not promise you to never take a sort of like action myself, but I do want to apologize for um, the shock it must have caused you. I do realize that the sector of museums and heritage is a sector that uh, is based on care and caretaking. And uh, I can imagine that it has caused a lot of stress. So therefore, I'm sorry. Um, that being said, um, being an, act an activist engaging in civil disobedience isn't to make yourself popular. It isn't to be liked. Um, we sometimes call ourselves an alarm, and alarms aren't very useful if they're comfortable. Uh, they're supposed to make you move. Um, and what action means to me personally, I am afraid. 
I am actually very, very afraid for what is to come, and it impacts me uh, in a way that I don't really dare to plan for the future uh, so much. It also pains me, I grieve, I, I actually f feel pain for what is happening to the living world. And um, I am really, really angry with uh, the fact that the system that is doing so much damage is deliberately kept into place to benefit uh, very few people on this planet. Um, and on top of that, I am hopeful. And uh, the grief I feel helps me to, to know that I care and that I'm part of something bigger. And the, the anger I feel uh, is my energy and I can canalize into, into taking action. Um, and I want to quote uh, Hannah Arendt, or it's, it's an interpretation I have. Uh, <laughs> that she, she says, or I interpret it, uh, that there is a great freedom in being born again every day and being born again with the possibility to act. Um, and I find that possibility within Extinction Rebellion. I do see us within Extinction Rebellion as, as caretakers as well. Um, we also want to take care of, of rare and vulnerable and valuable things. Um, life on Earth, and I do believe that we are allies, and I would really, really uh, want to work together with you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, I think that is that is really beautiful, and that you're using the word allies. Um, um, I'm also an activist, but I'm not uh, knocking on doors because I'm I'm already in. Uh, but that also comes with a responsibility, I think. Um, if you are in a position to make change from within, uh, you have to decide what is your span of control, what is the impact you can make. Uh, and in my case, I've been personally, I'm, I'm, I feel with you, with, uh, with uh, the, also the, um, uh, the fear you have and, uh, and also after actually these days didn't really help with that, but okay. Um, and, but this is more of a what can we do, huh? what is the action we take? And uh, in my position, it, as a um, director of museum association and of the museum card, so we also have a lot of people using a museum card, one and a half million, so it's both the museums and the public and the politics. You have a span of influence, and it is important that you use that, but in an effective way. And that means that you don't just facilitate what museums want to do, because sometimes museums are a little bit conservative because that's sort of their nature, but you also can act like an accelerator. And some museums are really good, and I'm happy I saw representatives from the National Maritime Museum who are uh, very active and will also speak today, but um, in the Netherlands specifically, that's why there I'm calling. Um, but um, uh, there are a lot of museums who are sort of waiting, and I think we can be an accelerator uh, and that's also a role we have to take as a museum association. Yeah. Thank you. So um, to have an actual conversation, uh, it, I hope that it won't be just me asking the three of you questions, but uh, also to respond uh, on one another and, and ask any <coughs> spontaneous question if there is one. Um, <coughs> Emek, um, I would love to hear a bit more about uh, Turkey specific and how the museum sector um, uh, finds itself in the green transition, um, what kind of specific difficulties um, the sector encounters or the sector needs to be more um, awakened and so on. Could you elaborate on that? Um. First of all, there is no uh, collective action at the moment, and uh, there are museums individually taking action, and some museums are actually built in accordance with these green building standards. Uh, however, it is difficult to maintain uh, the structure, so they prefer not to actually uh, 
use those features, like, uh, for example, they have solar panels, but it's limited, so they uh, still use a lot of electricity. And there, there is also um, in the other kinds of, like, uh, how do you say, green uh, water management, uh, but still they don't prefer to use it because it's still and there is a need to spend much more money, so they uh, prefer to have it as a uh, as a as something that is on the book that uh, brands them, but still it's not on in use. And there are also museums who are actually really taking it seriously, and they uh, take use it. For example, they start from the gift shop and then use vegan food in cafeteria, and uh, all their mat material, building material, is uh, environment friendly. They, uh, the construction materials all used from the local uh, surrounding cities. And so these museums work strong towards the, in the fight against the climate crisis, but uh, these are the ones who are actually uh, rich in f financially the rich museums. So uh, these private museums are more um, active, let's say, but state museums are not so, or municipality museums <coughs> are not so active in this fight. They sometimes expect this to be uh, coming from the top-down uh, approach, so they expect uh, there is no such uh, plan or any uh, regulation yet, and that's where we come in, because uh, recently we uh, wrote a letter to the parliament and also uh, ask to, because you know, uh, the situation in Turkey is politically also very um, fragile. Uh, we have to first reach to the president and then to, uh, because when he says something, then other, everybody works uh, faster. <laughs> so we try to reach him first. And uh, we also wrote a petition to him that when will, because he recently, like uh, maybe not so recent, maybe a year ago, told that we will take action and uh, change our institutions in accordance with what Paris Climate Agreement uh, dictates. So uh, we will move forward. But there's no action at all. So we wrote to him and also to the Minister of Culture that when will you start actually taking action? And uh, we <coughs> want to take this action now. It's urgent. You, don't ha you can't wait anymore because if this is to protect cultural heritage, as you said, this we have uh, we have this responsibility as uh, professionals, but we have to move quickly. It's in, uh, and Turkey is uh, we also have these floods going on around, and uh, there's earthquake and uh, wildfires. We, we actually uh, leave this every day, almost in winter and summer, and still there is. No action, um, but there is uh, there is the demand for action from the bottom. We uh, gather in uh, protests. Uh, we try to uh, ignite uh, some uh, movement, and we use this protest. For example, we take this objects on strike, as MFF uh, suggested. You can see on there is this U uh, UK. Student Climate Network that started that uh, they you can take the objects on strike and show it in the Global Climate Strike Days uh, on March and September that you can also introduce it to uh, people, to visitors, you, to raise awareness that we are as objects also or um, our artworks are also in danger, and we join to protest. We join in. Uh, collaborations with uh, other organizations like us. Uh, however, it is going slowly. We take action. There is individual museums, they are taking action. The, the, there are specific things they are trying to do uh, to give up using plastics or use vegan food or uh, bring your batteries, used batteries, and in return we will give you a free guided tour and so they, these batteries are recycled. And there are many uh, examples like this, but we want to take us to the higher level and put pressure on policymakers, decision makers, and create a regulation and 
so those other museums who are expecting something to come and implement, they can also start. Uh, Rebecca, um, this, what Emek just shared with us, probably this fr the frustration that you share about no strategy at government level, I think not only for the cultural sector, but probably for men, for, for the country at large. That That's right. It, that I, I, I feel that, that, your, that the frustration that you experience with the leadership wherever in the world um, uh, is actually uh, what, what Emek is describing. Um, Coming from Belgium, do you share what she is uh, pointing out? That there is no, um, um, at least in your country, that there is no overall strategy? Because what I noticed from um, <coughs> the uh, Belgium um, Extinction Rebellion declarations, that you have, uh, s you, you strongly call upon. Um, the national government, or the federal government, I probably have to say, if I compare it to the, the, the Netherlands, um, um, or the Dutch Extinction Rebellion organization. So there is a direct call upon on, um, your government. Um, do, you f um, do you feel that, that you are achieving uh, with your actions, that you're achieving some steps within the government? That well, I would actually say that the <laughs> Netherlands are better in doing that. I don't know if you saw, but they have done a, a, a blockade of the highway for almost a Several, year. Yeah. yeah. Well, they did it throughout uh, a year. And in the end, it, it did actually make a, a quite a big impact. Um, they demanded that fossil fuels would be, there would be an end to the subsidizing of fossil fuels, which is actually crazy that you think about it, that our governments are all still highly subsidizing fossil fuel use. Um, but anyway, in Belgium, um, uh, the government is, is not at all doing better than, than any other government, I think, uh, to say the very least. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure where you read it, uh, but I, I think we kind of uh, uh, don't really believe anymore that it's going to come from the government. So when, when we do, uh, do actions that put pressure on the government, they're at least as much to uh, sensibilize the public and to just disrupt everyday life to kind of be that alarm that I talked about before. And when we are talking about the cultural sector or museum <coughs> sector, even more precisely, um, what relation do you have as a representative of Ext Extinction Rebellion with the museum sector? and in particular in Ghent. Can mm. you elaborate on that, what your experiences are? Yes, gladly. Um, we, uh, well, last year when, when those actions within museums uh, started, um, there was, of course, quite a lot of stir and, and quite a lot of criticism, but there also was, uh, there also was some, some uh, people from your sector that spoke out um, about being a little more careful with condemning and, and maybe listening to why people would take such drastic uh, actions. And uh, we contact a few, contacted a few of them, um, amongst them Sergio, who is here as well. Um, and we started a dialogue and just talking and just uh, um, exchanging about our values and, and our hopes and fears. and. Um, one thing that came out of that was a cooperation with the, the City Museum of Modern Arts in Ghent. Um, we had a very constructive uh, cooperation. We would get a, a, a room within the museum and we were going to organize an outreach festival to kind of invite people in and, and come talk to us. Uh, a lot of people still think we're very dangerous or very weird people. We're quite normal, I would say, um, so that people could come talk to us, that they could uh, engage in, in, for example, the trainings we do or, or just uh, the artwork we make. Um, and uh, we were organizing some debates and it all went very well until we kind of launched this and it, it got on the website of, uh, of the museum. And then the city council got uh, quite uh, uh, nervous and they interfered, so there was a, a conversation with the director of the museum, and uh, from one day to the other, they kicked us out, because um, 
We also had planned a civil disobedient march. We were going to block the, the city ring for the, the small city ring uh, for a couple of hours, as we had done before um, three times. And this was also uh, like communicated on the website of the museum that we were going to do civil disobedient action and we were, were going to start at the museum. Um, so we kind of thought it was all right. We, we communicated this with the museum that we were going to do uh, an action. We didn't say which action, but we thought because we did it three times before, they would understand. Um, but yeah, the, mu the museum was mostly funded by the city and the city uh, objected, so we were kicked out. And uh, that was quite a bummer. We were adopted by a cultural house in the city, so we could proceed with our... Uh, <coughs> with our festival. It wasn't uh, very easy, but I still look upon the, the cooperation as very constructive and, and very nice, and I'm still very happy that uh, the director of the museum uh, was, was so open towards us and, and uh, engaged with us. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to, to cooperations in the future. I think uh, both with this museum as, as with other cultural institutions uh, in Ghent and Belgium and, and hopefully far beyond. Uh, yeah, Vera, um, could you imagine one of our Dutch museums hosting oh, yeah, definitely. this initiative <laughs> yeah. from the Dutch chapter? I don't think that is that, that's there. I think there are already a lot of discussions between Extension Rebellion and uh, and museums in the Netherlands. <clears throat> the thing is that what of course happened last year was the attack of the paintings, and that was by Stop Oil Now. And I haven't been able to have a conversation with Stop Oil now, but I have had a lot of conversation with Extinction Rebellion. And that's why I really like the idea of working together more than attacking. But at the other hand, I understand attacking or knocking on doors is sometimes possible to work together later. So it makes a change. So I completely understand the disruption is necessary to make a change. Um, the problem that I also had uh, related to that is that the Stop All Now actions, where, the, for example, the girl with a pearl earring from Vermeer was attacked with soup and hands stick to the glass, um, it, was, um, uh, it was really against sponsoring, fossil sponsoring, like Shell, for example. And uh, that museums should stop with that. But I think that it, I totally agree with that, but it's only one one thing you can do. So the discussion was very limited in that way. Um, so it, it, so it, it really, we really have to be clear at some point when what are we talking about when we talk about uh, sustainability and the responsibility of museums. It's then, of course, sponsoring is one thing, but I think there are also a lot of other things we can do. And it is important to make clear what we are talking about. And um, the problem I also see uh, with museums in the Netherlands that they very often have the idea that if I have my building sustainable, we're ready. Yeah. Like, okay, we have solar panels yeah. and we have heat pumps and everything is good and, you know, we're doing great. Mm -hmm. um, but there are so, and then you say, okay, but you still got sponsoring from Shell or KLM or how does that work? So, um, and also what is the message you're talking about? So we really try to make sure that so it is a very wide subject, and how can we make it clear um, uh, what kind of things you have to consider uh, when you're talking about sustainability? Um, so we try to make it easier. Oh, yeah, it's, it's on the screen, that helps. Um, so what we, we try to we really map it, not only with the museums, but with a wider group of, uh, from the culture field in the Netherlands, that we said, okay, what topics do you have to think about when you want to be sustainable? And the first one is the A from accommodation, which is like your building and your, your, the, the green around it. And the second one is communication. And communication is, is, um, can be both that you, that you make sure that you communicate what you're doing for sustainability, but also what kind of program do you have? Just do you, but not every museum can have an exhibition on climate change, maybe. It's not a related topic, but then they can do something in their canteen or in a restaurant where they say, we don't serve meat because we think it is important. So there's always something you can do about communication. And then we have transport, which is also a subject, we saw it yesterday as well. Uh, that's a footprint. It's very nice, you can you calculate your carbon footprint, but um, when at least 80% of your carbon footprint comes from your visitors, 
Uh, that's sort of uh, for museums very difficult because they want blockbusters and they want a lot of visitors because then they're financially healthy. So, but at the other hand, um, you don't want visitors actually because they're your biggest footprint. So how does that work? So you really should try to rethink that. So you might consider offering environmental transport to your museum from a public transport or electric buses or you know, offer bikes in the Netherlands, I don't know, a lot of possibilities, but also focus on your local public first and make sure that you have a strong connection with your local public. They don't have to travel that far. And of course, it's also about transport of um, paintings or whatever, but the biggest impact is your visitors. And it's really often something we don't want to talk about because we want visitors as more and more and more the, and more the happier. Yeah, so. we're stuck in the system. Yeah, we're stuck yeah. in the system. So I uh, just finished them. So you have your internal um, business processes, of course, like your what kind of food you're serving, um, uh, but also where what do you do with your uh, exhibitions? Uh, you don't use um, uh, don't use your vitrines. Every every exhibition you need new vitrines. I think that is a very old-fashioned way of thinking, but still a lot of big museums think they need for every exhibition, they need, they need new displays. And of course it is sometimes difficult, but you really have to rethink that. And then last one is the external uh, partners, the E. So the, that is the sponsoring, of course. Um, and I know there are some people uh, in the room who have museums who are, don't have sponsoring. It is really something which is very common in, uh, in the Netherlands. But, uh, so you have to think who are my sponsors, but also who are my partners. So if you are uh, working together with, um, for example, an uh, exhibition uh, uh, displayer or an exhibition makers, and what kind of materials are they using? You know, who are, the, who are, who are your local partners you're working with? What kind of materials and what are their standards on, um, on sustainability? And, um, we really try to make it simple, and it's a lot, but it makes clear that it's a bigger conversation than just buildings or just sponsoring or just, you know, it was so fragmented. And I think it has to be one holistic view on how to approach the problem and also how we can take responsibility as a museum sector. And Emma Kerebeka, um, uh, where, if, if we look at this model, it's in Dutch, but uh, I think we we understand. Uh, I make it, it's also understandable to you. Where do where could you uh, see a role for collaboration with your organization with your with with Extinction Rebellion? In what part would you envision yourself if you're interested in collaboration? Well, first of all, external that. partners uh, we would benefit a lot for the Turkey. It could be a good example for our uh, museums as well and also exchange of uh, experiences. And um, this transport idea is <laughs> great, actually. Uh, but yesterday we were in a workshop where we were part, I was part of the mobility and uh, travel uh, working group. And it's, it's really, there is so much need to um, work on that and find out a, like a good strategy. <laughs> and communications definitely um, f but for the internal uh, thing, I didn't really, I, I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, no, um, it's more about uh, it's more about how you run your um, you uh, yeah, business. Yeah, de definitely also, yeah. 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 I, I think most, most, all lot, <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not so sure. I would guess I'm an external uh, partner in this. Um, I also feel like I can't say anything about how you should organize uh, the transport of your communities or, or visitors. Or I don't feel like I can, can say much about how you should uh, make your museums climate neutral. Um, what I would want as a partner or, or what I would want to ask you all is, is to uh, um, speak out and step out of uh, trying to do this the, the nice and easy way and uh, um, as Greta Thunberg always says, treat, treat the crisis as a crisis and I, I've like isolating your museum and, and making the transport green is super important and we should all do that but that's not what this is about anymore. Um, 
we need we need to do so much more and we, we need to be so so much bolder and, and we need to be so much radical so much more radical than, than we are today. So I think my role in this would be to be uh, very radical and ask, ask you to <laughs> to be yeah. radical with yeah. me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is anyone interested in joining the conversation? So Questions from the, I see a question there, is a question there, there, okay. Is there a mic? I see a question over there. Four questions already. Who can help out <coughs> with the mic? First and foremost, I would like to, to, to thank Nimo for bringing you to the stage here. I think this is really important. Um, and I thank you for your statements, uh, especially from the activist side, the Museum for Future. We have a German chapter as well, as you know. And of course, Extinction Rebellion, which is kind of the sister of the last generation in Germany with whom we work. But I would like to, to, to mention one point which I think is important here. It's not only to have you on the, on the stage and to be you know, courageous and bold with your statements. We have to act and act also against the criminalization of the activists. Um, in Germany, we had on Museums, International Museums Day in May an, an activity with the last generation and with the Museum for Future in eight museums. Uh, all over Germany. The museum directors were facing a lot of pressure from their city council, from the local community, from the media, from the newspaper. In essence, I think it was a wonderful action, but only two days later, the police in Bavaria was raiding the homes of the climate activists on, on May 24, 25. And what we see is with all these nice uh, actions that, you know, bringing people like you to the stage and giving you the opportunity to, to, to speak, we see an increasing pressure and criminalization on activists all over Europe, especially in the UK, but also in Germany. And I think this is uh, what where museums really have to speak out louder because this is not the target group. It's not the target group to criminalize the activists. It's actually the target to criminalize those who are responsible for using fossil fuels, for not getting out of this economy. And as you were saying, Rebecca, for just you know, walking leading us blindfolded like in the minefield of, of, of our <coughs> future. So thank you very much for your uh, statements. And I think museums can do a lot more to act against the criminalization of activists, which we are seeing increasing all over Europe. Thank you. Can I, can I just add to your story? I have three friends and they glued themselves to the girl with the pearl earring in oh, yeah. uh, Den Haag. <laughs> The Hague, sorry. And, um, they were in jail, actually. Yeah? They, were really, yeah. they were in a police cell for six days. A uh, police cell is, is sitting and sleeping and shitting in, in a cell all by yourself. They were let out to uh, a shower every day, and they saw the policemen that were on guard. That was it for six days. And then they were in jail for two weeks. So this happened right after the action because there was the the possibility they might flee the country because they're Belgians and they want to do it in the Netherlands, so they were jailed right away. Um, so six days in isolation and then another two weeks uh, in jail before they were uh, freed. And their trial will actually be in January, I think. So they might have to go back to jail. Um, and again, I do understand the shock and I, I do understand how uncomfortable it is to see something happen to, to a painting that we all know and we all love and, and that has been taken so good care for for so long time. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and then I feel, I feel that it is also important to speak a little bit then from the other side because I'm, 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 I'm with you uh, and I agree with that we shouldn't criminalize the, uh, but it, uh, the activist. Uh, but it would also be nice to find a way to work together because I think museums can also take the role of the activist as well. And in this case, I spoke to a lot of people in the Maritz House and uh, they were actually also the people working there were really shocked. So it was a really shocking and painful event. Um, and it was really difficult. I did it uh, and I tried because I, the museum directors after this incident didn't want to do interviews. Uh, because they were afraid that they were going to be the next one. So at the end, the director of the Mauritz House did say something. Uh, but I tried to do the um, uh, speech for the first side, and I really tried to say, to make clear that we're on the same side. Yeah? We want to accom uh, accomplish the same thing. So I completely agree with you, but it would also, 
if it's really something you um, had no art on a dead planet, I agree with that completely. Uh, but let's try to find a way to do this together. I also would like to say that. So it is, I, yeah, I, I feel with you, but this was really a shocking event for the museum professionals there. And, uh, and um, yeah, I also felt, yeah, that was also uh, difficult, I think. Yeah. And who should take the initiative to, to create a synergy? No, uh, uh, well, what yeah. would you recommend? The, the sector uh, yeah. or the activists? No, and yeah, Rebecca, both. what are your thoughts? Yeah. No. Well, yes, both. Yeah. I just ranked a few of them that spoke out in the media and, and uh, some really nice uh, corporations went from there. So I would just tell you to look up your local activists and call them and, and yeah. ask them for, for a coffee. And They're also just people. They're, yeah. they're very much just yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, Trying to, to live, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Can I also Thanks. say a few yeah. words about this? Uh, the, these uh, events happening globally are affecting people, for example, in Turkey, people react to this, museum professionals as well, and they see what, what's the purpose here. They don't get it exact immediately. It's an uh, action towards, uh, to, it's the climate action. It's received more like there is a there is, a, and they react against the climate activists. So there, it creates another reaction, a negative reaction. So it's definitely we need to work together. And actually, Museums for Future is an alliance to Fridays for Future movement. And we uh, in our we have this uh, <coughs> simple ten steps that museums can support climate activists, we invite, we suggest that we, you invite museums, invite these climate activists and work together. And also, we, as we are also museum professionals and museums from the cultural sector, uh, individuals from the cultural sector, so we also suggest these individuals who are climate activists and go uh, connect these museums and suggest an ac action together to work on something together. Thanks. So we had just one question from the audience, but there were four already. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, yes. uh, Cristina Vannini in Turcom, I want to be a little bit radical and controversial at the moment. Um, I was a little bit disappointed by your reply of uh, you don't know what, uh, uh, what's the agenda for museums since um, most of the time, uh, above all in Italy, museums uh, in Italy and other places, museums are the target of uh, uh, rebellion, um, activist actions. So I was really expecting a, an agenda of points on which uh, museum could uh, uh, sit down with uh, the activists and say, we can start from these and we can uh, step by step reach uh, from the easiest uh, to the most uh, impactful. So um, I like activism. I support what you do, uh, not you in person, but the, the activists' uh, um, activity. But then if you rebel, you've, you've got to have a name and you have to be able to share it with the ones who can cooperate with you, because otherwise it's just rebellion. And we saw uh, the, the elder uh, people saw how rebellions sometimes end up in nothing. So um, I, I wish next time you <coughs> or your colleague can come with a list of actions that we can do together. Just to be clear, you're now talking about the Italian section of Extinction Rebellion? I, I'm talking about now and everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they show up talking, they've got to, and asking for a collaboration, they must tell us on what we can mm -hmm. collaborate. Because otherwise it's very difficult in some sectors I mean, in some institutions, to find a way to be active with you in your not in your support, but in support of the climate. Yes, I I would love to to answer you. Um, 
first of all, we're, uh, what I said in, in that it's not up to me to tell you what to do, I mean that because I'm not an expert in, in how to run a museum or I'm not an expert in, in how to keep uh, art or how to, to um, make, it, make it greener. Um, I'm just an educator. I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to do that. What I do know is that I am a citizen of this world. I'm part of the living world and, and I see it go to pieces. And um, the reason that activists target museums isn't because we think that you're not green enough or that you're not uh, transitioning fast enough um, or not more or less than any others or most other sectors. The reason that activists target uh, museums is because you hold very vulnerable and valuable artifacts that... Um, That have that have value to everybody, and we and and it, it isn't nice. I I realize that it isn't nice to do that, um, but we do use you as a canvas to to get a platform to speak to the world, and um, I would really really like to to start talking to you about what we could do together, but I don't think it's in in bullet points of how to isolate your museum or, or how to get the toilets running on rainwater. I think it should be about active citizenship. It should be about opening the museums to the public. It should be about um, engaging communities. It should be about giving people a voice. It should be about reminding people that they're active parts of society. And I think museums are perfect places to do that. And, and I think that's what we as activists miss a lot of the times is the, the legitimacy and, and the space to, to, to come together and to, to um, reach the bigger public. So that, that I would really... And to all of you, please come talk to me if, if we can just uh, continue this talk over coffee. Yeah. Next question from the yeah. audience. I just have to... Okay. Hello, Estelle de Bruyn from uh, the Royal Institute for Cultural Heritage in Belgium. I'm also the leader of the Sustainability and Climate Action Working Group of NEMO. And we will have this afternoon uh, a workshop on how to organize people assemblies. So I think that we will also uh, talk about this very specific topic. What I wanted to ask uh, the panel is... It is clear that there are a lot of actions. Uh, it is clear that uh, there are a lot of things that we should do and that we, for some museum or for some personal people, we are already implementing. But there is also a feeling that we need to know where we are heading for. And now we have always kind of defined sustainability by the negative not over-consuming, <coughs> and then you have all the films and movie and, and literature around the, the future that are dystopia. So if we continue to do what we are doing right now, this is how we will end. But in a way, if we want to coordinate our actions, I, I really believe, and I, I'm not the only one, that we need to inspire and to work together to first define a desirable future, a sustainable future. That's my question to you. Uh, maybe if you can give one point or one idea for this desirable future that you would dream to build now uh, for, for us, for the Earth, what, what would be this, uh, this point? I can start with uh, something that came to my mind. Um, I think the important thing right now is to change our uh, habits uh, because we are so much in the system that we don't realize but we are also so much about consuming. That's why sustainability is also emphasizing to consume less or responsibly. It's always about responsibility and uh, to act responsibly in every sense, I think. And for us, we envision a future where um, these talks are over. <laughs> and uh, so the, we, we already uh, changed our behaviors. And um, <coughs> where there is the uh, museums are neutral, 
and actually our target is to uh, become all museums for future institutions to become uh, carbon neutral by 2040. So that's our plan and we try to work towards that. And, but uh, we need to work, we, need, we really need to change. If you want to see, uh, uh, the, if you are visioning a future that is positive or constructive, I think you, we need to change. We need to be that change to see that change, you know. So we need to work together. And I also would like to extend the invitation to join Museums for Future here uh, so that our, we make that future together, we construct that together. Fira. Yeah. Um, I think it is very important that we create an awareness in the museum field that the collections we're keeping um, are just... I mean, they're, they're, they're objects that we have only for the future. So um, it the only, it's only useful if there's going to be a, a planet we can live on and a future we can have and in, in a safe environment. Otherwise, it's no use of keeping all this stuff. Yeah? Let's say it like that. So that means that all the collections we are keeping uh, are relevant for what we're doing now and what we're doing in the future. So in, if you look at it like that, I think for every museum, it doesn't matter if you're a contemporary art museum or you're in a historical building with an interior collection, um, you have to make it relevant for today and for the future. Um, and I think uh, if you make it relevant, you're also relevant to your communities uh, to the local communities, but also, yeah, for your country, for your, the stories you want to tell, and also to, to um, and you are also relevant. And I maybe you started with uh, uh, with some uh, um, um, war, uh, mentioning the war. And I, I think it's good that war. you, yeah, don't mention the war. <laughs> I think it's good you mentioned. It. I think we also have a responsibility in that case uh, to. Uh, for the social um, uh, connection within society. And we cannot leave the social connection, uh, peace, uh, world peace, uh, uh, separated that conversation from um, planet uh, uh, environmental uh, health. Uh, so there are all these big subjects and uh, which we can, which we have an obligation, I think, as museums to tell the, tell the stories. Uh, with our communities um, to take that. So I think that's an important role, even more than we're doing now. And I think museums at this moment maybe are not always aware of that responsibility because they have been looking at the past, maybe a little bit to the present, and they have to realize what is their position for the future. Thanks. I have one, we are actually about to close this session, but I have one final question for, for you, Rebecca, and in a way it reflects also um, what I'm confronted with in my um, um, work in the Jewish museum sector. Um, Rebecca, you work with this heavy load, with this dark future, perspective of the future on a daily basis, or, you, or you're, you're thinking about it, and you're working on it, and what does it do to you as a human being, emotionally? Um, and how, how is, uh, what kind of support system do you have around you? And in particular in Extinction Rebellion, how, how does one support one another um, in dealing with, this, with these scenarios? Um, um, Working with, so I, I just have a day job and, and being with Extinction Rebellion is, is in my spare time. Um, so I'm a volunteer. Uh, we are all. Um, but working with this um, or, or being with this awareness and, and reading about this and, and seeing it happen before my very eyes uh, feels like walking around with an open wound. Um, I just carry that everywhere, um, but and I, I said that in 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 the beginning as well. It it also f fuels me to uh, do take action, and I find a lot of um, 
um, comfort and, and uh, joy in that. Um, and taking action, like sitting down in the streets and blocking it and, and being dragged away by the police, that's, that's one form of taking action. But there is millions of forms of taking action. And of course, the being dragged away is, is what you see in the media. Um, but Extinction Rebellion is, is about so much more. Um, we work very actively on, on resilience and, and regener regen regenerativeness if that's a word. Um, so so we, we work in cycles and we, we very uh, awarelessly, no, no uh, uh, very, we're very aware of, of we deliberately do that, um, where, we, where we start preparing for an action. And when I say preparing for an action, we also think about preparing meals for the activists. We also think about um, legal uh, support. We also think about um, how to get there, and, and, and um, we also think about psychological support afterwards. We have body systems where we, we pair up more um, experienced people with, with newer people to, to help each other and to, to support each other. And um, we do big risk assessments. What, what would happen if we block this road? Um, we, tr we try to do everything we do with a lot of care. Um, and uh, then we do the action, and then afterwards we, we have we take a lot of time to kind of rest from that and, and be together and talk together and, and kind of listen to each other's um, experiences and, and carry each other in that way. And then we take take a step back and we, we rest a little bit and we try to nurture ourselves within our own environments and with our own families and work and, and the things that matter uh, in our personal lives. And then we start thinking again about what can we do, and we start preparing again. So we, we go in cycles, and, and we we are very careful to, to maintain that, because otherwise you wouldn't really be able to keep that up. Um, and within those cycles, I, I find a lot of uh, uh, relief from, from the pain that I carry. Um, and I'm not saying that, that everybody should join. I, I would want you all to join. Um, but uh, And you're very welcome too, of course. Um, I understand it's not for everybody, and everybody has their own way of taking action. Um, but for me, this, this is a very uh, um, safe and uh, uh, constructive and loving place to be. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, audience. Thank you. I think it's now also time for us to... to have a coffee and yes. to yes. take some distance from all the things that were said today. Thank you so much.